For more than a decade, FTI has strived to become the leader in the aftermarket, performance, transmission, and converter industry. We've joined forces with McLeod Driveline Components under the leadership of Top Fuel Funny Car pilot Paul Lee and now have a larger distribution network, more resources, and more power. Come see us in the pits and ask how you can join the FTI family. It's not cheating. It is the competitive edge. This is WFO Radio. Hey, everybody. WFO. How's everybody doing out there? Joe Costello back with you. And we are going to connect with the Summit Racing Equipment NHRA Nationals Pro Stock Motorcycle winner, Angel. Back-to-back final rounds, by the way. We're going to talk with Angel about the season 46 career wins, what lies ahead, all of that. So if you love Angel, Pro Stock Motorcycle, the NHRA in general, drag racing in general, share the show. Share it. Retweet it. Share it from YouTube, subscribe, all of that stuff. Now, before we get to Angel, I just got to go through the people who make it possible. Just like she's got her sponsors, we've got our sponsors. Otherwise, I can't do this, literally and genuinely. I can't just sit around all day trying to track down drag racers, and this is great. Also, by the way, guys, for those of you that love commenting live on the show, this one's not live. Just saying, just getting you up to speed. Now, you already heard a little bit about VP Racing Fuels. You heard about those guys and FTI Performance Transmissions and Torque Converters. We really appreciate these guys. We'll tell you a little bit more later. But also Total Seal Piston Rings, the leader in ring seal technology. Matt Hartford and the team working so hard to push the edge of the envelope as far as ring seal and cylinder surface. That hone, so amazing. We're learning so much on our Hidden Horsepower podcast. But the bottom line is this. If you are an engine builder, if you're in the engine building trade, if you're a stock eliminator racer right through the nitro ranks, all the way up to Formula One, Total Seal can help you unlock that hidden horsepower. So get on the website, call Keith Jones, call Lake Speed, and tell them you heard about it on WFO Radio. Also, Phillips Connect, talking about Justin Ashley's team, Jim Epler, Mr. 300 mile per hour, Jim Epler, smart trailer technology. What does it mean? It means keeping things on time and scheduled and knowing where they are located. But it also means keeping your loads safe, your loads and your drivers. If you're in the transportation industry, go to phillips connectcom to find out more information about their smart trailer technology. Later on in the show, I'll tell you a little bit about samtech.edu, the school of automotive machinists and technology, Frank Hawley and Frank Hawley's drag racing school. And of course, Marvin Rodak and his coffee and grill and hot sauces and spice rubs and all the great stuff he is grilling up down there in Fort Worth, Texas. But right now, let's go out down to the Mai Bayou and connect with Angel after a huge win. Angel, welcome back to WFO. How are you? Yeah, I'm glad to be here. I'm thrilled that you're here. I'm thrilled that you're here in that it was uh, it was interesting to watch you in Bristol. Wanting to go back to back in that place. And they smoothed it out a little bit. And it's much better than it was. But red light in the final round. And you were very angry about that. Because Jerry was early right alongside. And you got redemption. You came out to the next race and you won it. That's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. Bristol was heartbreaking. Um, I have to admit that when I went there. I, I didn't think we would be in the final round again. I mean, I knew my motorcycle and my team was very capable of it. I just didn't think my luck would be there. And that's what the difference between Bristol and Ohio was, was that I changed my whole thought process. You know, I, I feel like my motorcycle is unbeatable. My Suzuki, my Vance and Hines Mission Suzuki is an unbeatable piece of machinery. My Vance and Hines team is unbeatable. They are amazing. Angel, on the other hand, has not been so unbeatable lately. So that is what I am working on. And I worked really hard all week between Bristol and Ohio. And I especially worked all, really hard all weekend in Norwalk to change my mindset and the way I think and the way I perform. And um, it was not easy, but I got it done. And it's a, definitely a work in progress. But Back in the day, I used to be unbeatable in my mind, and I'm working to get towards that again. So that's that's how I did it. Okay. I love hearing that, but that inspires me to dig a little deeper, right? Some people would be listening to this and saying, she's got 46 wins. This is one of the winningest, you know, three championships. How can there be doubt? 
How can there be doubt? Uh, it's a, this is a mental game. If there ever was one, you can go from hero to zero in no time at all. Uh, yeah, the 45 wins before I got to Ohio is something to be said. You know, I'm, I'm very proud of my accomplishments. Um, but I just know how tough the sport is. I know how tough the competition is. And it's difficult. You know, it's difficult to get the motorcycle from point A to point B. I don't know if I've ever in my 20 something years of racing, have I ever had a perfect run? You know, there's always something that goes wrong. So, and there's just not much room for error in drag racing. I mean, let's face it, it's a six second race and it's not a four hour football game or a four hour circle track race. It's a six second race. There's so many things that can go wrong. And the team works so hard all week long and they give me a motorcycle that can win every single race. It, it could have won every race we've gone to this year. Um, and then when they hand it over to me, it's all in my hands. And so, you know, you kind of start to think about that. You know, I'm the one that has to get this done now. They are, their job is 100% complete. It's all up to me now. And I was allowing the negative thoughts to, to slip in. And instead of thinking about what I needed to do right, I was thinking a lot about what I could possibly do wrong and blow it. And that's what was going on. So I'm, I'm working on that. Uh, it's actually pretty interesting, you know, what I have to do to make it happen. You know, like you said, it, it's, I'm sure a lot of people wonder why is it hard for me to do, but I'm going to make it not hard. That's the goal is to make it easy to get up there and be determined and, and fierce and the fire breathing dragon that I always was before I'm going to get back there. Um, I know that I am the only one that can beat me. So I'm fixing that. And we had a really good time in Ohio. I had, a, I had so much support from my whole team. It was unbelievable. I mean, even Eddie, you know, my teammate who loves to beat me was unbelievably supportive. Andrew, Scott, Jay, Gray, everybody at the shop. It's just, you know, Erica talks about it a lot, the kind of support she has from her team and, and it's true, you know, I have the same thing going on with mine and, and I, it hurts so bad when I mess things up and I don't give them the win and it feels so good when I get it right. And I able, I am able to help them get that win. So this weekend, number 46 was way beyond anything I can imagine. Um, Kevin McKenna reminded me in the press room that it was the one race I needed to beat Dave Schultz's all time win record. And I got really emotional when he brought that up because I had forgotten about that. That was the one goal that I had set from, for myself from the beginning of my career that I hadn't yet accomplished. So now I have accomplished every single goal I've ever wanted. I'm not the winningest pro stock motorcycle racer, thanks to Andrew and Eddie, who has me beat right now. But I am, um, I have more wins than Dave Schultz, and that's a pretty big feat. Absolutely. Well, he's an icon, a, a god of the sport and really the benchmark for so many. Of course, his career, uh, you know, cut a little short due to cancer, but people loved the guy. He was beloved and uh, just a, amazing, amazing stuff. Now, I, a, a, Andrew's I, out there with 50s. Hey, there we go. Kitty, put everything else aside. He wants to see what's going on. OK, you need to kitty. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> We have priorities here on WFO and with dogs and animals. Okay. Dogs and animals. Drag racing talk can wait. Andrew's got 56 wins. What's Eddie at? What's Eddie's number? I was wondering another day how many he had. Eddie has 49. He's trying for his 50th. So I think Eddie and I are now in a race for who gets to 51st. You know, he's ahead of me. Um, yeah. But I do it. If I could just hold him back. Now it's going to be a little bit tougher now because they figured out his Suzuki. And he was really flying in Ohio, number one qualifier. And he's a great racer. He stays calm, cool, and collected inside of that helmet. So it'll be a little bit of a feat to get past his wins, but I think I can do it. And that'll be the fun this year is to have the rivalry again between the two of us. We've always had a huge rivalry. Being on the same team, it's still there. But there was never really anything other than, you know, who's going to win between the two of us. But now we have something significant to shoot for, and that's who can get to 51st. Do you think you can get four wins before Eddie gets one? I'm, de I'm determined to do it. I told you I'm going <laughs> and um, back in the day, I used to actually, there was a statistic that I held for quite a while. It's I won, I think, I can't remember the number, but every third race I went to, I think it was every third race I won it. And uh, if I could do that this year and hold Eddie back, we may, uh, we may get, I may get to 50 before he does. Wow. Well, I got to 50 years old before he did. 
So if I can get to 50 wins before he does, that'll be great. I'll rub it in his face like crazy. Yeah. I love this. I love this. You know what I love the best? And let me just let people behind the scenes. I don't know where it was. I guess it was Gainesville, your first year with Vance and Hines. And we had a conversation about you being with Vance and Hines. And I, I came up with the analogy that some players, you know, they want to play on the New York Yankees and then they get on the New York Yankees and all the pressure, like the uniform weighs 500 pounds of just everything associated with it. We had that analogy. And now here we are two years later and you're wearing it well, like you are doing a great job. Andrew's out there, you know, he's Andrew. So he's always thinking about, no, oh, she did a good job. She did a bad job, that kind of stuff. But uh, two years in, when you look back at that conversation, do you feel fully part of the team? You know, you pegged it when you said that you asked me a minute ago, you know, when fans don't understand why is it so hard? That is one of the biggest reasons you know, if I were self-funded answer to, and the only one that when I lose is me, it would be a much different story. But I have not only the best drag race, pro site motorcycle drag racing team there ever was, in my opinion, is Vance and Hines behind me, giving me everything I need. We now have Mission on board, um, a wonderful, huge, amazing company who supports all forms of racing. They're all on a mission. I have them behind me. And then even better this year, we now have the Suzuki behind Suzuki factory team is what we are now. And the Suzuki um, motorcycle corporation is 100% supporting us as well and wanting us to win. And um, so, you know, I have all the guys at the shop, all the guys on the team, everybody at Vance and Hines in California, everybody at mission, everybody at Suzuki, all wanting me to do this in the weekend. So that makes it really, really hard. And yes, I'm wearing it much better these days than I did the first year. The pressure is still there, but I'm learning to handle it. And I'm learning to realize that these, all these people are still going to love me if I don't win. As long as I give, give it all I have and do a good job and I don't win, they still love me. So that's the thing I have to you know, keep reminding myself. Just do your job, do a good job, whatever the outcome is, so be it. But Man, you know, it's hard to turn off that passion for winning that I have. You know, I, I wanted to mention this, too, because in the I was I managed to not cry on TV when I won this time. I've, do, I've been doing a lot better with that. I did cry in the press room. And that's another thing, you know, going along with all the pressure of the sponsors and the teammates, um, the pressure of what I put on myself, of how I want to win, emotions that come through. There, there'll be emotions of happiness, emotions of anger. And I'm trying to contain them and present myself well on TV. And sometimes it's just really hard to do when you have emotions as I have. I mean, they just come pouring out. Sometimes it's screaming, sometimes it's tears. But man, you, know, you guys judge me for that. Give me a little bit of a break because um, you'll never, ever understand how passionate I am about this. Well, I'm happy to hear that we broke you down in the media center. That's... <laughs> yeah. Just Mike Salinas too, though. You know, everybody comes into the media center. They go, yeah, he broke down. Oh, thank goodness. I left after I walked out. I was thinking about Erica because Erica is so good, you know, when she does her interviews and so articulate and is able to handle her emotions. And I, I leave and I'm so embarrassed. I'm like, God, I did it again. I didn't want to cry and I did it again. I'm so stupid. And uh, so to hear that somebody else did show that kind of passion, it makes me feel a lot better. Okay. But let me stop you there. Okay. Cause now, now we got a bunch of things. I got all these pictures you want. I don't I have no idea. Angel sent pictures. I have no idea what this is important about, but we got to go there. Why don't you realize like, this is the thing that showing that emotion might annoy 10% of the jerks out there, but it will excite 90% of the people who are looking for, for like, wow, look at this person. They really care about what they did. Look at that girl. Oh, she's wow. Amazing. Let me watch her next week. Everybody that says uh, that they don't want to cry. I say, well, that's fine, but you're kind of doing a disservice to the people who are trying to get people to watch this stuff. Cause that's exactly why they want to watch to see yeah. emotions. Well, when my husband hears this, he's going to fuss at me because he tells me all the time to stop apologizing for crying and just be who I am. Yeah, and do it. I am not apologizing for it. I'm just trying to get people to understand where the passion comes from. And I, it's hard for me to explain it because I don't even know where. It, I mean, I love racing and I want to win more today 
than I did the day I started. And I kind of wish it would go away a little bit, you know, so I wouldn't try so hard and I wouldn't mess up, but it's not going away. And I guess it's just something I'm stuck with. Terry Vance doesn't want it to go away. He wants me to keep wanting to win as bad as I do. He just wants me to be able to handle, you know, handle the pressure when it's time, when the helmet's on, put the emotions aside and do my job. So that's what I'm working on. Well, you know, you mentioned Erica too. She has to deal with the 10% of jerks out there too, right? Like, you know, I, I have this rec rule of like the rule of a hundred, like in every hundred people, there are X many real jerks. There's X many super nice people. And then everybody else is in between, right? Like, I think if I'm watching in a room of people drag racing and somebody wins and she pulls or he, she or he pulls off the helmet and breaks down with joyful emotion that the likelihood of the people that are watching of caring about it goes up. That's just yeah. my feeling. So uh, my recommendation is don't hold it back, but uh, whatever, whatever's right for you, obviously. Well, it's all genuine. I guarantee you everything you see, whether it's anger or happy tears or upset tears, I wear my emotions on my sleeve and I don't think it's going to change anytime soon. Good, good. 50 wins. I, I'm glad that's on your radar too, because I've been thinking about that for you. And I've been thinking about that for Erica. She only, she has got only 38 wins. So I was thinking like, who's going to get to 50 first, but you kind of have an advantage and I don't want to pit uh, our greatest lady racers against each other. But I'm glad you're thinking about 50 because that is a meaningful number. Well, I have to have a race my entire career without a goal. And like I told you, 46 was the goal. It was the only one that I didn't reach and I finally reached it. So I can't go to the next race with no specific goal in mind. I mean, I, I know I want to win every single race I go to, but I have to have something even bigger than that. So now... I got to 46 and I'm thinking, heck, I can get to 50. Like I didn't know how long I'd be out here. I didn't even think I'd still be out here today. So I'm very lucky and blessed that Vance and Hines has me on the motorcycle. I'm hoping they keep me on the motorcycle. I feel like I'm physically and mentally capable of doing this for several more years. As long as they have me, I'll be here. When they're done with me, I'm done. But I'm hoping that I can get to 50 before they tell me I'm done. I love hearing about that. All right. You sent some photographs. I want to talk to you about some of them. Let's uh, start off with this one. This looks like a big deal. What's yeah. going on here? That I am so proud of this. So the AMA, this is their motorcycle magazine, American Motorcyclists. They did this wonderful story, the whole story of how I got started and how I got to where I am now, including their formal robbery at Vance and Hines and becoming a Vance and Hines teammate. Um, it's a 15-page article inside of mm -hmm. this magazine. Lots and lots of pictures. It's amazing. My proudest accomplishment when it comes to publications is this one right here. And it couldn't have come at a better time than right before we won the race in Ohio. So it just came out this past week. So proud of it. So I don't know if you guys at home get this publication. I don't know how, you know, if you can get it now that's already out, but um, it's, it was a beautiful piece and I'm so proud. Joy Burgess wrote it and uh, we used a lot of um, Matt Polito's photos and, it, it was just, I'm very, very proud. And look at the cover. Isn't it beautiful? That's, That's incredible. Matt. Oh. That's Matt Polito did that? Yeah, Matt did that picture. First of all, Matt Polito is a friend of mine. I love that guy. He's great. And he's an artist. And, yep. uh, you know, Brett Kepner says that Polito is the guy who trained him up on shooting and, and many others. Um, that is fantastic. And yes, there are newsstands. People can go to a newsstand and see, seek out the magazine and that will be good for drag racing and on gel. Um, I'm just proud because not only how big the, uh, the article is and how much publicity we got with it, but the fact that here I am, I'm going to be 52 years old this August. I've been in this sport for 25 years. I did take six years off. I'm still trying to win. We're still successful. I got a great team. And then look, this comes out. You know, this is the kind of stuff that happened 15 years ago. So to be able to get something like this done now, this far into my career, it's a really good feeling. And it makes me feel like I still do have a reason for being here. Well, you are also a microcosm for everybody else out there who's getting a little older, but doesn't have to quit. It's not That's like when we were kids, you and I are around the same age in the same region. And when we were kids, like someone that was like 50 was kind of like old, not yeah. anymore. 
we're not like that anymore. And and people in this middle age territory, like, am I having a midlife crisis? No, I never stopped being the person that I was. It's just a different experience for people going through life now. Look at force. Like, what the oh, heck? I know. Well, I, I look at him and other people, and that's why I tell myself I still have plenty of time. Um, one of the things I, I like to remind myself and other people is it's never too late to start something you want to do. And it's always too soon to quit. So just remember that. I like it. I like it. Okay. So you got some great shots of you on the bike looking good. That Suzuki is good. How about Suzuki bringing out every, the biggest midway thing we've ever had? Yeah, that's exciting to have them back at the racetrack. A uh, big, beautiful Suzuki hauler with all the motorcycles you want to look at. Every, every dirt bike and street bike and off-road and on-road type vehicles are there. Um, we have really cool Suzuki pit bikes that we get to ride around now. And then this new Hayabusa that we're riding on, um, we are developing, Vance and Hines is going to be developing the newest Hayabusa body. So looking forward to having that one. I'm not sure exactly when it's going to come out, but we also just, Andrew and Eddie worked really hard and all the guys back at the shop to put together a show bike that's traveling with the Suzuki rig now. So if you guys get to get out to any races this year, um, our Hayabusa Suzuki Pro Side Motorcycle will be on display and you can sit on it, get a feel for it, see what it's like. It's um, really cool, really comfortable, very mean looking in my opinion. My I call mine Beauty. I say her name is Beauty and she's a beast. And look at her right there. She's just gorgeous. I love that. You know, I saw that bike in the display and I wanted to go sit on it and I was afraid. I was oh, like, maybe I'm not supposed to go sit on it, right? It's like, is this, no one was there. It was like unoccupied. Is that a race bike? Should I sit okay. on it? Now I'm going to break it. Wrong and you're not supposed to sit on it, but I'm pretty sure they allow people to sit on it. But let me tell you, Joe, if you want to sit on it, come get me. We'll go. You can come sit on my beauty. You don't even have to sit on the show bike. I'll let you sit on the real one. Woo. All right. I like it. I like it. We're doing that. We're doing that. What's this? What is this about? What is the meaning uh, of this? Right here. Okay, so that is a homemade from scratch red velvet cake that my husband made for me for winning the Summit Nationals in Norwalk, Ohio. And the reason why he did this was because for many, many years, my grandmother, her name was Helen Hartman, she lived right here in Lafourche, Paris, Louisiana, would make a red velvet cake from scratch. It was her own recipe every single time I won a race. And so it was something that I used as motivation. My mom would even tell me, picture my mom sitting we call her Momo, picture uh, your grandmother at the end of the racetrack holding a red velvet cake and you'll get the win. And I did. I got so many of them and she would make one every single time. Well, she passed away um, in 2014, I think it is. And I didn't have a red velvet cake ever since. And I told many people about how much I love her red velvet cake. It's my favorite thing in the whole world. And so many people said, oh, you got to try this one. You got to try that one. This bakery has one. That bakery has one. I have tried at least 50 red velvet cakes since the passing of my grandmother and nothing has compared to hers. So I just came to terms with the fact that I would never have her red velvet cake again. And then one day my husband, we have her recipe. He's like, would you let me try it? Because I guess he was kind of scared that it would upset me or, um, you know, what if he did make it good? What, you know, what, how would that make me feel? So he's like, would you let me try to bake it? I said, sure, do it. So he, um, everything from scratch, the icing, everything. And he also bakes it on a Traeger grill, the smoker grill. So the first time he did it, I told him a couple of things that I thought it needed. Cause look, she gave us a recipe, but you know how grandmothers are. They probably twist and turn a little bit yep. in not looking, but I remembered the flavor of it so well that I could tell Seth, I think it leads a little bit more of this, a little bit less of that on the second try, he nailed it. And now ever since he's, he's been able to do it. He bakes a red velvet cake for me every time I win a race. So I think this is my third one. He did Bristol and Charlotte last year and then uh, now Ohio red velvet cake. So if I make 50 wins this year, <laughs> I'll get a lot of red velvet cakes. I'm going to have to hit the gym a little bit harder because even though they added 10 pound star Suzuki's, I'm going to have to watch the weight because I will eat the entire red velvet cake by myself. <laughs> Hey, I love red velvet. That's uh, amazing stuff. Great. I was wondering, like, what is the story with this photograph? And it's awesome. What a great story. Yeah. All right. What about this? You got new gear. Yeah. Check it out. So we finally have on gel shirts again. Thanks to Randy Lynn's hot rod horsepower headquarters. 
um, at the drag races, which is Bo Butner's wife. Um, Bo Butner's stuff is in there too. Erica's stuff is in there. Charlotte Modowney. So when you guys get out to the racetrack, find uh, Randy Lynn's Horsepower Headquarters. And we finally have this really cool looking Angel Vance and Hines Mission Suzuki's motorcycle on there. I love it. The purple's been really popular. Um, the pink, pink ribbon on there is all from my mom and every other woman in the world who has fought against breast cancer. So you guys remember that that's a big deal. Uh, and I support it fully. So I love it. I'm proud of it. I'm glad we finally got a shirt. I get asked 50 times a weekend, do you have a shirt? And for a couple of years now, we didn't have one. So here it is, guys. And we also have a link online. So you can check, um, uh, should know the horse. It's a uh, Randy Lynn's even... Horsepower Headquarters. Yes. So, but we'll, we'll get it to him. We'll get him. You can put my Facebook page and my uh, Instagram page and the links in my bio. I just want to, I want to look at, look at the shirt. Okay. Everybody look at the shirt. And now look at this photo yep. and look at the shirt, except the photo was taken this weekend and the shirt was made obviously before the weekend. It's like, it, it's yeah. identical. Well, you can see my feet are on the pegs. I'm going on a track on that one, but I was doing a burnout in the other, in the photo. Yeah. Very close though. Very close. Yep. That's cool. And Randy Lynn has been very helpful to WFO with our gear as well. We're in between shirts at the moment, but we're working on something for the future. Um, that is, that is great. Um, and obviously another Wally. All right. So let's look ahead. Let's look ahead because you are, um, I, I want to ask you about the final round though. Joey Gladstone. You, okay. you guys have a great relationship with Corey Reed. I talked to Corey before the final and I, he's like, no interview until until the big one. And you could tell he was like fired up. You guys have got a great relationship. Um, their day is coming. That's what I want you to talk about. Oh, yeah. I, you know, I hate being the one to take it away from Joey again. That's the second time we're in the final together. First time he had just awful bad luck and I was able to get the win. This time, you know, it was mine. I took it. So there was nothing luck going on here. But Joey's right around the from getting his first Wally. He's running a Suzuki Hayabusa just like mine. He's running the four valve, the Suzuki four valve engine that Vance and Hines has developed. It's a, just an awesome, awesome, awesome engine. And um, they are, they've really got it together, getting it tuned up and getting it down the racetrack. And Joey's a heck of a rider. He can leave, you know, like the best of them um, and does a great job getting it down the racetrack. It's just a matter of the stars aligning for him. Like it's like I told you, it's a six second deal. You got to get everything perfect in six seconds. So as soon as his stars are aligned, he's getting that Wally. But I will definitely make sure that I give it my best to stop him every time I can if it's in the final with me. But I'm, I'm, I'll be glad to see him get one eventually. Well, exactly. And that's it wouldn't be meaningful. Like Joey would probably become very enraged. Uh, he's a he's a little bit of a hothead in a good way. He doesn't want anybody giving him anything. He wants the day that he wins it. He wants to earn it. And so that, that is that. All right, Angel, final, final thoughts. Um, you're 50, what is it? 52 out of the lead of Steve Johnson. Uh, I don't know if Steve Johnson has more in the tank, if the field has caught him, if they've just had a couple off races. Somebody suggested that Jock wasn't there. I don't know. We're going out on the Western swing, preview the swing and talk about the bigger picture. You have got a chance to not just get 50 wins, maybe even this year, but another championship. But the, yeah. the problem is the more you think about that, the least likely you are to get it right. You got to get in a zone where you're just doing your thing and the good stuff will happen. Yeah, definitely. I don't like to count points all year long. You know, I, I, I always know where I am because everybody's always telling me where I am. Um, but I try really hard to take every round one round at a time and the points will come. They'll add up, you know, you can win a championship and never win a race. So Eddie has proved that when he first started, he actually won his first championship and hadn't won a race before. So if I can just keep going rounds, that's all that's going to matter. You know, making it to the semis, making it to the finals, winning one here and there, it'll add up and we'll get it done. Uh, but it's also possible that Eddie could do it and Matt could do it and Steve could do it. Angie, I mean, there's just so many people these days that can up. And that's what makes the class so wonderful now is it's not one or two riders getting every win. It's uh, the whole class can do it. Every every rider from 1 to 16 is capable of winning the race um, and stealing the championship. You know, with the top 10, the way it works now, you get into the top 10, the points are zeroed out, and there's only a 10-point spread between each rider. 
And so it, you could be number 10 going in the, into the countdown and still win the championship. So as long as you're in there, you have a chance. And I'm just going to keep focus, keep having fun, keep a positive attitude, and we'll see what happens. But I know my team knows we can do it, and they want me to do it. So I'm going to give them my best effort. I love it. I love it. And keep showing that emotion. That's good for the sport. Whether you want to or not, it's good for the sport. Angel, congratulations. Way to get redemption, right? Bounce back after. Now, you and Jerry, you grew up like two blocks away from each other, right? Like, is that a, a great friendship or rivalry? How much should we make of it? There's no other competitors that literally grew up like two blocks over, two blocks up, something like that. It really was one street over. I mean, walking distance from my house to his Um my mom and dad were very close friends with Jerry all of my life. And I used to babysit his daughters actually, when our parents would go out and do things together, I'd stay home with the kids. And I've just been really close. Uh, his whole family are, is like my family. So Jerry and I know each other way better personally than we do as competitors. And so, I mean, we do a lot of stuff together as well. Like, you know, I'll call him and find out when's his plane, when does the, pl the plane land? How you get to the track? So we could share rides here and there. I've ridden back from the airport with him several times. So we're great friends. And it, it, I don't know if that makes it easier or harder when we're on the starting line together. Because, you know, there's a point where I want to win. I don't want to take it from Jerry, just like I don't want to take it from anybody else. But of course, I'm not giving it to anyone. I want the Wally more, more than anybody out there in my own mind. But, you know, if I lose and Jerry wins, I don't take it as hard because I'm happy for him. So now I did take the loss against Jerry in Bristol very, very hard, but that was because it was all my fault. And I, and I felt like I had let down my whole team, but you know, at least I was able to see Jerry get the Wally and his emotions. If you saw his interview, he goes crazy with his emotions as well. I mean, he's as passionate about it as I am. And then that makes me feel good. So, I, you know, I look at that and I think, well, I wasn't able to finish the job, but I was so happy and proud of Jerry. And it, it's just, you know, we brought it back home to Louisiana, whether it was on in my suitcase or his. It was all yeah. good. Parish it's amazing that two great racers came from the same block on a street. <laughs> like that's that's unusual. That's like California yeah, right. funny part stuff. Yes, but Jerry, Jerry does some pretty wild things beyond pro stock motorcycles. And his alligator hunting is not even the biggest thing. I mean, he's wild with alligators, but that man had a really fast boat that scared the heck out of me. He flies helicopters. He's crashed his airplane. I mean, he's just crazy. So <laughs> pro stop motorcycle for him is nothing. There you go. Angel, thank you for spending time with us here on WFO Radio. Congratulations. Great win. Many more to come. I know you're going to be enjoying the heck out of that red velvet cake. What a great story. Thank you for spending time with us. Always love having you on the show. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for having me. And remember, come see me in Denver. I'll let you sit on beauty. Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it, everybody. Thank you, Angel. Take care. Bye. There she goes. Angel Sampe picking up the win. 46 in her career. She's gunning for 50. And that is a big, big deal. I'm going to go sit on the bike. So I was in the Suzuki display and I'm looking at it and it is this really long display. And I was kind of marveling at like, man, this, they brought a lot of stuff out to this track. This is a huge investment in NHRA drag racing. This is good. It's always good but it's also huge. And there it is the bike. And I was like, can I go sit on that? It looks like I could sit on it. I don't know. And uh, I was like, I'm going to go do it. Right. And, and, and I better not. And I did. Eh, I better not. And I did, but it's as simple as that. Thanks to Angel for coming on this show. And those of you watching on YouTube, share the show. And here is a com a comment. My question is this, and I have no idea why the internet is skipping and maybe it is, or maybe it isn't when you're watching this after the fact, but the bottom line is this. Do you think, Angel will get to 50 wins. That is the question I want you to answer in the comment section. And what will she finish her career with? Answer that in the comment section at the bottom on YouTube. And we'll see what you say. We'll see what you have to say. All right, let me tell you about the people who make it possible for me to go WFO. And thank you for letting me do my sponsor mentions. But really, it's a benefit to you when I'm talking about something like RodaxCoffeeAndGrills.com, 817-924-6821. Call Marvin, coffee roasted, fresh per your order, uh, order full bean is what you really need and grind it yourself and you'll be living in a new world. It's as simple as that. Take your coffee game to the next level. Call Marvin. Also, the habanero endorphin booster hot sauce is amazing. Frank Holly's Drag Racing School, learn to drive a dragster. 
at frankhawley.com. The Dragster Adventure at frankhawley.com. It's amazing. Drive a dragster uh, at three runs, a half track and full track passes, two of them. You can bring your friends, you can bring your clients, you can bring your sales team, you can bring your buddies, you can make it a corporate experience, you can do it for your own personal stuff. Let them know you heard about it on WFOFrankHawley.com. And then there's Samtech.edu, the School of Automotive Machinists and Technology. We always say, start your education at full speed with Samtech.edu. They've got blocks and heads and cylinder programs, uh, motorsport EFI tuning, CNC programming, Samtech.edu. Plus our great friends at PhillipsConnect.com. Of course, Phillips-Connect. Appreciate Mr. Epler and uh, Justin Ashley. Total Seal Piston Rings. VP Racing Fuels, and FTI Performance Transmissions and Torque Converters. Yes. Yes. Now, people have been asking me over the past couple of days, and I'm going to do this to everybody on every show because I want everyone's opinion. You can leave this in the comment section too. KI from CIP1, which if you're a Volkswagen person, you got to go out to CIP1.com and check it out. But he gave me this pack unopened 1993 Winston drag racing. Like who's in here? 25 photo cards and some gum probably. Yeah. Should I open this or should I save it? Someone said I should donate it to draw for the auction. I love and respect draw the drag racing association of women, but the impact, this is not going to go for a huge amount of money. The impact that we can do with it here on, on WFO, I think is better, right? Just, Getting people to wonder when we're going to open it. Like, what? when are we going to open it? And one day, when you're logged on, there's a chance that I may open this. And then we'll go through the cards together. And we'll see, like, who's in here. Or maybe I'll give it away. Or maybe it'll just sit here forever in perpetuity. We just don't know. That's like one of the big mysteries on WFO is this guy gonna open the pack maybe i'll open it for the patreons oh maybe it'll become a patreon only thing no i'm not gonna do that i'm gonna include everybody all inclusive so what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep on going if you're wondering why there was no live commentary it's because you know i'm planning ahead i had to take a couple of days away from the studio so we're doing this now right you want to join the Patreons, patreon.com slash WFO radio. We're going to have a meetup at Indy. We're going to have a meetup in Vegas too. I think I'm going to be down at the Stampede of Speed. But if you want to really become involved and go inside of the show, patreon.com slash WFO radio. The WFO store, it's up there. We're not really doing the face coverings anymore. That's not really a thing anymore. But if you go to the store on WFO radio.com, you can check out our T Public store and all the cool stuff we've got up there. Very fun. You can be like the... Gutierrez brothers and get uh, some WFO swag, sweatshirts, long sleeve t-shirts. They do sales from time to time. I love this. The WFO mug. You can get a Miami Hollywood Speedway mug too. All really good. And the Angel stuff at Hot Rod Randy's Horsepower Headquarters. Very cool. And the Gutierrez brothers. They all loaded up on their gear. Yeah, that was a big moment. Who else is coming on the show in the future? Well, I don't want to be too you know, crazy about it, but we got a Mike Salinas appointment for his big win out there at the Summit Racing Equipment NHRA Nationals. We got a Robert Height appointment, right? Chris Thorne, Fuel Tech Pro Mod winner, is going to be on. We got to catch up with Bill Skillman for Factory Stock Podcast again. And Jerry Savoie. We didn't talk to him after Bristol. So all the reasons to stick with us. There you go. Jerry's going to be on soon. You got to stick with us here on WFO. Thanks to Angel. Great job, everybody. Remember, if you're watching on YouTube, subscribe, click the bell, never miss a show. We'll see you next time.